Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to build my own tech company and share the lessons that I learned along the way. This week, I wanna share a new feature that I've been building in my application, which is a daily use streak. My application is a productivity application and I wanted to give users the ability to have a streak that counts how many days in a row that they log in and are logging their work. So let's take a look at it. Here is the statistics dashboard that I showed in a previous video. And in the middle layer here, where it says minutes focused, active streak, and longest streak, you can see the, the streak feature that I'm talking about. And please ignore, in the line chart down at the bottom, on the fourth it says, I didn't do any work, but my streak is still set to five. This is not true. I covered it in the last video that I published on this channel. There is an existing bug that had to deal with when days were calculated and uh, this is a byproduct of that but i have since fixed it and made a video about it but this screenshot was before i fixed it so the active streak is five longest streak of 20. how did i get this to work well once i built out the ui for this part of the website i needed a place to get this information from so i needed to create two new columns on my database so in the users table let's see here so in the users table, I added two columns, active streak and longest streak. And you can see here that my active streak is five and my longest streak is 20. And there's some other users that aren't using my application. So that is the information that we're retrieving from the database. And we're showing it there in that middle layer that I talked about previously. This is the fetch streak info code. And we're gonna go over how that works and when we calculate the streak info. So basically the first time that a user comes to the stat statistics page, they probably won't have a longest streak or a current streak active in the database. So in that case, we're gonna need to calculate it. So we're gonna select the active streak, longest streak, and experience for the user on line 200 from the database, from the users table. And if there's an error, we'll uh, console.error to, to log that error. But if there is data, we want to first check if the active streak is zero, the longest streak is zero, and the experience is not equal to zero. And this is the specific use case that we should recalculate or initially calculate the user's streak info. So we're gonna call that function on line 211 to calculate the streak info for the user. So now we are in the calculate streak info function. It takes in a user object on line 241 and returns a promise that resolves to an object that contains the active streak and the longest streak, which are both numbers or is undefined if there's an error in calculating this stuff. So first we're gonna uh, query the database from the Pomodoro's table and we're gonna select everything from the completed at column of that table that matches the user ID associated with this user object. If there's an error, again, we'll console error it. But if there is data, the first thing we're gonna do on line 253 is filter out all of the nullable data or the non-nullable data from this data set. So anytime there is a, a null object, that means that the Pomodoro was not completed. The user either left the website early or they manually canceled it and there's no completed at date. So it would be initialized to null if there's no date there. The filter data will contain all of the non-null Pomodoros, non-null completed at Pomodoros. On line 254, we need to sort our data. I didn't do this at first, and I just saw some weird um, byproducts of not sorting it, and it seemed like an easy thing to do. So we're sorting that data on line 256 with a regular sort function. 259, 260, we're initializing the daily streak and longest streak to zero. And then we're going to loop over our data set, do data set and do some calculations. And a pro tip for you JavaScript users watching, which is probably 100% of the people, um, if you have a for loop, like on line 263, right down here, and you are looping over the length of an array in JavaScript, if you are calculating the length of the array inside of that for loop instantiation, you are going to recalculate the length of the array at every single iteration of that for loop. So it is significantly more cost uh, prohibitive or like it just makes more sense from a CPU standpoint by an order of magnitude 
for you to calculate the length of the array that you're looping over first, as I am doing on line 262, before you instantiate that for loop on line 263. So inside of that for loop, this is all the calculation that we're doing. Again, at the top, 262, 263, we're calculating the length and then looping over the length of that array. And then we're setting the current Pomodoro to whatever the current iteration of the array is on the completed at array, if that makes sense. And then we're also creating the previous Pomodoro. If n is greater than zero, the previous Pomodoro is going to equal n minus one inside of this array. So it's always going to be one behind. But if you are on the first iteration of this for loop, that would be undefined. So we're just going to set it to be equal to the current Pomodoro on that iteration. On lines 267 through 273, we are slicing off the year, month, and day of the current Pomo and the previous Pomo, respectively. Then we need to get into our core logic here, which is lines 275 through 290 or 292-ish. And what this is going to do is check if the current Pomodoro is uh, one day ahead of the previous Pomodoro, if that makes sense. And if that's the case, we'll increment the daily streak by one. And again, the daily streak is a counter that we're just going to occasionally increase by one. The counter exists outside of this for loop, so we are able to access an existing value inside of this for loop and increment that value as we go through the for loop and find cases that match our case where we should increment it. And then we're gonna set the longest streak on line 281 to the maximum of either the current longest streak or the daily streak. And that will make sure that the longest streak is always the max of those one of those two values. And um, we also are using the year and month in the calculation for the weird edge case that like if it's 365 days in the future between your current Pomodoro and your last Pomodoro. Um, and then we're handling the edge case for if the current Pomodoro day does not equal the Pomodoro, the previous Pomodoro day, and, or the year and month are also dissimilar, it is definitely more than one day has lapsed since between these two time periods. And again, we'll set, we'll, in this case, first set the longest streak before we reset the daily streak to zero. And hopefully all that makes sense. But after we do our calculation, which is basically looping over all of our completed at Pomodoros and counting all of the, the streaks that were within you know, 24 hours of each other or within consecutive days, uh, we're going to return that streak information out of this function. It doesn't get returned to the user quite yet. Instead, it's gonna return out of this function. I think previously I showed um, here on line 211 inside of the fetch streak info function we are occasionally calling the calculate streak info only when it's necessary. So there is a constant, a variable on line 211 being created that is the value returned from the function that I just outlined. So that calculated streak info variable. So we calculate the value of that. And then if there is calculated streak info, like if there is information inside of that variable, then we're going to need to update the database with the information that was returned from that function. So you can see we're going to call superbase, await superbase, and in our users table, we're going to update the active streak and the longest streak to the returned information from our calculated streak info function. And then we're only going to do this where the user's ID equals the user ID that we are uh, given inside of this function. If there's an error, we're, we're log logging that error. And then if there is data returned from that super base call on line 213, we will first log it. Just I, I like console logging a lot everywhere in my application so I can see the flow of data at a glance if I open the, the console. And then we're gonna return the active streak and the longest streak back to our user. Hopefully that all makes sense. If you have questions, leave comments down below. Um, there is more in that function, but basically it's just that we're able to skip that whole middle part of calculating the user streak info if we already have data in the database. So here at the top of that function online uh, 205, again, this is the fetch streak info function. 
uh, if there is data and if there is an active streak, longest streak, or experience is not equal to zero, we can just go ahead and skip everything in our calculate streak info call. Uh, everything in this purple square in the middle here, we'll just skip all of that and bounce down to a return statement on line 233, which will return the active streak and the longest streak that is returned from our database. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Now that we are calculating the user streak info from existing data, we need to handle the case for when a user, when we should be updating that information in the database outside of needing to calculate like past data. So I have a use effect that is uh, attached to my Pomodoro application. And when the state changes on that uh, Pomodoro application, uh, basically the state will change between Pomodoro or break, short break and long break. So if the state type is not equal to Pomodoro, that means we've just finished a Pomodoro. And if the remaining Pomodoros is equal to 12, we're gonna wanna update the streak. So we're doing that on line 79. And when we do wanna update the streak, we're also gonna to have to pass in the current Pomodoro on line 79. We have another use effect um, in that same Pomodoro part of our application that is going to check for a user being loaded. And this is gonna get all of our initial data for the application. So once the user is loaded, this is handling for the, cage, the, the edge case for if a user has uh, logged in and it has been longer than 24 hours or it has been like longer since yesterday when the user has completed their last Pomodoro, we wanna first reset their streak to zero in that case. So on line 113, we will update the user streak passing the user object, but this time we won't include a Pomodoro that we wanna update. So here we have that update streak function that I was calling in my previous two uh, slides. And um, another sort of pro tip, if you're working in a large code base, this is the way that I like to look at code. You can see on line 305, there's a little arrow and then it jumps down to 330. Whenever I have a lot of information that's inside of an if block, I will usually just hide everything in that if block until I need to access it in, um, and, and when that, like those conditions in that if block is met. And that just keeps the code pretty clean as I'm scanning up and down, looking for the code that I'm trying to change. So this offers a sort of summary of what this function does and just minimizes um, around 25 lines of logic in the middle of it in that, uh, if block on line 305. So what this function as a whole is doing is it takes in a user object and conditionally will also take in a Pomodoro sometimes. It will fetch the most recently completed Pomodoro for this user. It will create a new date object and set the time to midnight of yesterday. And then we're going to check if the most recent Pomodoro.completed at exists. That's on line 304. And then our main two if blocks are, if that mo most recent Pomodoro completed at is greater than yesterday morning, yesterday at midnight, UTC. Otherwise, we're going to check if it's less than yesterday morning at UTC. So you can see, um, I've left some code comments in here, which I, I realized as I was making this slide deck that I need to go in and finish this. Um, but this is how I code is I'll first create the if conditions and then I'll leave comments for what happens and uh, the code that needs to be done. So here, if the most recent completed Pomodoro is less than yesterday at midnight, then the user has broken their streak and we need to reset the active streak to zero. So that would happen on line 331, 332, etc. So let's jump into that if block on line 305. And if the most recent Pomodoro completed at is greater than yesterday morning, then the user is continuing their streak. And the Pomodoro only gets passed into this function when being called from the dashboard on the first Pomodoro that the user completes that day. And when that event happens, we should increase the user's active streak. That's a comment I left to myself. So 309, if Pomodoro is being included, then 313, streak info is going to await fetch streak info for that user. And I believe that fetch streak info is a function that I previously outlined in this slide deck. And we wanna increment the streak now. So if that streak info exists, we're going to await a call to Superbase. And from our users table, we're going to update our active streak to equal our active streak plus one. If the active streak plus one is longer than the longest streak, 
then we're also going to update the longest streak to equal the longest streak plus one. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry if I was going a little fast, but if you have questions, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it as soon as I can. Now there's probably a better way to do this. I think that's always true. And if you know of a better way, please also leave a comment down below because I would love to learn from you. But this is the way that I did it and I wanna share that with others so that they can learn from my mistakes if this isn't the best way to do it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.